problems, problems with food, problems with the body, problems with the mind, problems with emotions. And what happens, as it says here in, in, in Genesis, is that, you know, Satan says, or the serpent says, your eyes will surely be opened. And that's what happens. We, we are, Eve was enticed to be enlightened, for her eyes to be surely opened. And her eyes were surely opened, but she did not see, when her eyes were opened, she didn't see with the purity and the innocence that God wanted her to see the world, that God wanted her to see food and the body and the sexual relationship. But she sees it through um, a defiled way, a twisted way, okay, because it's her own wisdom. And see, this is the beauty of, of, of a man and wife, that they're able to stand before one another with, with, with nothing, absolutely nothing. And there's a beauty in that because they're seeing one another with the purity and the innocence of the love of God. And that's what Adam and Eve were able to do before they sinned, before they took on their own wisdom, before they decided, I will decide for myself to know what is good and evil. I can't trust in God for him to um, teach me or for him to give me the law of what is good and evil. I can't trust that. I'm taking matters into my own hands and I'm going to decide for myself in my own wisdom, in my own psychological makeup, I'm going to decide for myself what is good and what is evil, what is right and wrong for me. And when we do that, we, we do not look at the world, we do not look at people, we do not look at relationships with a purity and an innocence of the love of God because our life is not coming from God. Our life is coming from self. Are you with me? Our life is coming from self. Now, everybody does this. Nobody has the perfect upbringing. When we're children and we have a mother and father who are given authority over us to love us and nurture us and care for us, a little child has the psychological makeup, and I'm not a psychologist, a little child has the psychological makeup to know mummy and daddy love me or mummy and daddy don't love me. Okay, and when a child, and because we, because we created in God's image and likeness, the love of God is within us. A child knows what it is to be loved because that's the spirit of God within a child. They know what it is to receive love. You just have to look at a newborn baby at a mother's breast, being filled with the love of God because that's what they're created to do, to receive love. That's what we're created to do, to receive God's love. We're the recipients of God's love. And a little child knows how to do that really, really well. I mean, if you look at a bird out there who makes a, a, a nest without having any sort of engineering teaching and the perfection of that nest, well, how do they do that? Because it's in them, okay? How much more us, created in God's image and likeness, receiving the love of God, a child knows what it is to be loved, okay? And so psychologically, a child knows I'm loved or I'm not loved, okay? And when a child is not loved or they psychologically believe that they're not loved, they have to do something in order to hold their heart open, okay? So you can imagine if a child is in a, in a family relationship where it is abusive or it's inconsistent, Okay, where the behaviour of the parents are inconsistent, how long can a child hold their heart open to that inconsistency or to that lack of love? How do they cope? Well, you see, that was you and me when we were very little. As perfect as your parents were, as wonderful as your parents were, we are sons and daughters of Adam and Eve. We, are, we do not have the perfect upbringing. And so a child can't ho hold their heart open to inconsistency because they're not receiving the love of God. They're not receiving what they know they should be receiving. And it's not the parents are deliberately trying to hurt or harm. It just happens because we live in a fallen world. And so then a child psychologically says, well, I can't trust that. I can't trust mum and dad. And when they're saying that, they're really saying, I can't trust God because the parents represent God to the child. 
And this is what we're hoping to do. This is what the Lord is doing within us. He's restoring the hearts of the fathers to the children, the children to the fathers. You're a product of your generations. You're a product of war. You're a product of famine. You know, you're a product of rejection. We're a product of whatever has happened in our nations, in our tongues. And we're, we're a product of the history of this world. But Jesus Christ is far bigger than that. He's wanting to redeem us, to restore us through the blood of Jesus. I'm just trying to give you understanding so you know who you are, where you are, where you've come from and our need for God. So we can't judge our parents. We can't judge our forebears. We can't judge them. We can't really even judge ourselves. Okay. But the Holy Spirit is giving us a conviction and a convincing of who we are and where we've come from. To receive that initiation of love and to respond to it so that the hearts of the fathers can be restored to the children and the children to the fathers. You know, we want this next generation to be a restored generation, a generation for Jesus Christ, a generation that is a thousand percent on what we are doing this day and this age, a thousand percent in newness in God, in victory in Christ, going forth building the kingdom of God, advancing the kingdom of God. And that's God's inheritance. That's God's blessing for us if we would only yield to it. Okay, so we're all wounded. So we all function in this psychological wisdom. We set up our own belief system. We can't believe in the goodness of our parents. Therefore, we can't believe in the goodness of God. And so what we do as children is that we rebel against that authority. We don't know what we're doing, but we rebel against that authority. We're not dependent on that authority. And we all do this in different ways. But we basically all do the same thing. And that's what we've been talking about this year, restoring God's holy order within families, where we honour the authority that God has given us in families. We honour the authority God has given us in the church. We honour the authority God has given us in this world. And that's what Jesus Christ fulfills. That's what Jesus Christ did for us perfectly. See, we're in a preparation time. The old covenant was a preparation time. The promises of God were there, okay, but they could never be fulfilled. They could never be attained. Why not? <laughs> because we couldn't obey. You see, we couldn't obey because we didn't believe. You see, we're still the same today in our human nature, you know, back through the histories, back through the Old Testament, same old human nature. God initiates his covenant of love. And we have to respond. We're the recipients. Okay? And our response has to be obedience, always obedience. I can't obey. None of us can obey. None of us fulfill the requirement. This is the old covenant. Couldn't fulfill the covenant in obedience. Can't obey the law. And law was to receive life. That's where we receive the life of God. Can't obey it. Can't do it. And so this is a preparation time. It's like we're in old covenant times with our attitudes. A preparation time for the Lord to show us why we can't obey. And we can't obey. Let's come back to Genesis because disobedience comes after unbelief. It's always unbelief first. See, if we really believed in the goodness of God, it'd be easy to, easy to obey. So it's unbelief. And we have this individually and we have it corporately, which really affects us from moving in faith. Because our faith is not in the goodness of God. Our faith is in me. I'm believing in me. I'm trusting in me. And so whatever I do, whether I sing a song, play the guitar, give a talk, do the video, Try to be a mother or a father or a brother or sister in the Lord. What am I giving? I'm giving me. Am I giving life? Maybe. But I'm really not because my source...